Good Monday afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlothauer here with another detailed weather forecast as we are keeping an eye on Thursday and Friday for a big, severe weather event that could unfold for the Deep South. As the latest SPC outlook has highlighted a 30% large area of severe weather for day four and a 15% for day five. So to start things off, here's a look at the latest European model for Tuesday morning, February the 28th, 2020. 23. This is the last day of February before we switch the calendar into March, and March is going to come in like a lion, and I'll tell you why here in just a little bit. So first off, heavy snowfall, blizzard conditions, cold temperatures, and strong winds will continue across California, Nevada, and even the Four Corners for the next two to three days as a pretty intense upper-level disturbance moves across the region. By Wednesday morning, that disturbance moves into Southern California, bringing more light to moderate rainfall, more flood potential, and more heavy snowfall for the mountains there. You all really need it down there. And so that's going to be good news to hear about when going forward. You're getting the moisture. Also, the four corners. You're getting more snowfall, more rain for Phoenix, Arizona, which is great to hear about, right? Because you have had some dry weather so far this winter, and finally, you're starting to get things heated up there as far as moisture goes. But this means big problems for Texas, for Oklahoma, and for the Deep South. Let's go and flip into Thursday morning here on March the 2nd. This is when it really gets nasty, okay? Actually, March 2nd is on Thursday. I, I want to just clarify that because there's no date here to help me out. So by March 2nd, we can see a cold front and a warm front draped across Oklahoma, portions of Arkansas, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, and then here comes the big storm. So by Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening into early Friday morning, we are talking about big time severe weather across eastern Texas. So it looks like here in northern Texas, it starts firing up right around, say, about noon for uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas. And then eventually it really gets going here along the warm front by about, say, 6 and 7 o'clock as p.m. for central time. We got a nice cold front, a kind of an arcing Boeing segment here, very similar to yesterday's event, and that's going to bring in some big time damaging winds. But look at the surface low, really deep this far south. So we're going to have a lot of moisture advection pumping in off the Gulf of Mexico instability. It's going to be very sheared environment here, and we will look at the wind profiles here in just a second, but you can see there is the system uh, really dynamic. We got the cold front, we got the warm front here, we got the occluded front, we got the surface low. Very, very dynamic system. Probably one of the better dynamic systems that we have had possibly so far this winter season. And actually, it's technically meteorological spring here. But either way, some of you might feel winter-like temperatures. And then, of course, for Chicago, for northern Illinois, by Friday morning, heavy snow, blizzard conditions, strong winds. Definitely a for-sure deal with this winter storm as this moves into the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, including for the Northeast by Saturday morning. So that is a very strong system that we really have to watch closely for. Another dangerous weapon that the storm will have with it is very strong 500 millibar dynamics. I mean, pretty significant here. This is at 18,000 feet. We have had one of these troughs already ejecting into the high plains yesterday. We're gonna have a similar um, scenario set up for Thursday exactly the same in fact but only that this surface or this upper level um, upper level dynamic system is gonna be stronger so let's go forward here okay by thursday afternoon there is the trough this is more positively tilted as you can see here even neutrally tilted but it's going to become negatively tilted by wednesday or wait by thursday afternoon and as that happens the dynamics come into play and look at this system I mean, look at the winds over eastern Texas here at 18,000 feet, 130 knot plus winds, extreme amounts of shear. We have very large inflated hodographs, so um, supercells that could produce strong tornadoes. 
large hail and damaging winds will definitely be a sure bet uh, going forward here for Thursday into Friday. And look at that. For Mississippi, northern Louisiana, by Friday early morning, 145 knot mid-level uh, jet here rounding the base and this becomes more negatively tilted. So this is a big deal, all right? This is a very strong system, and this is pretty much close enough to the Gulf of Mexico where we're going to have big-time severe weather with this one. Possibly a moderate-risk severe weather outbreak cannot be ruled out. And then that gets into the um, upper uh, Midwest and the Great Lakes by Friday. On top of that, we're also continuing with a lot of moisture infection. Look at this. Dew points in the upper 60s to lower 70s. The last system, we had limited amounts of moisture. Not this go around. This has plenty full of moisture to infect northward because we have the surface slow. And you could see why that is. There is your warm front draped across Tennessee, across portions of the Carolinas, and to the south of this, we got those dews that are going to be in the mid-60s, upper 60s, possibly even some low 70s down here across southern Louisiana and southern Mississippi and Alabama. So we could be looking at moderate instability, possibly even strong instability down there. And when we have the dynamics in place, the kinematics and the thermals that all come together, we are talking quite a bit about severe weather. And that's why Again, the Storm Prediction Center that you're about to see in better detail really outlines the 30% risk, a large area too, not just a tiny little 30% risk for severe weather. So instability, we just talked about that over central and eastern Texas, anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram. So we have definitely a lot of instability out there with this, and that instability will mix and maximize over the Louisiana, Eastern Texas into the Arklatex area by Friday or by Thursday night into early Friday morning. But once this gets far enough east, the instability will definitely back off a lot, unless if you're in Mobile, where instability could remain pretty modest into the marginal category for severe weather and severe storms. So yeah, a lot to talk about down here in Dixie Alley for another potential Dixie Alley kind of severe weather event at this point. That's why the Storm Prediction Center has went ahead and issued a large 30% uh, risk for severe thunderstorms all the way from Eastern Texas into Louisiana, into Mississippi and Alabama, including for Central and Southern Arkansas. This area could get upgraded to a higher probability for day three. Possibly a moderate risk. Cannot rule that out. I, it's on the deck of cards. If not, definitely a moderate risk for day two. And of course, for day one, I think this is definitely warranted for a moderate risk. Camping issues, not much of a problem with this one. So definitely a huge area that we really got to focus in on. Not only that, there's a day five slight risk for severe weather also for the Carolinas, including for Georgia, eastern Tennessee, and also for eastern Alabama and northern Florida. This could get upgraded to an enhanced risk in later outlooks, especially by the day one, day two, or day three. So a very active couple of days down here for the Deep South. Definitely need to be aware of my upcoming videos by subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. It really means a lot. If you do, please subscribe. And also like the videos if you're enjoying these so freaking much. Not only that, quick promo here. We do have a Weather Force Gilded server. I am no longer on Discord. If you wish to send me a friend request, I will probably not respond very fast enough. So I highly recommend that you participate in the Weather Force Gilded server. Gilded is similar to Discord, only that there's a lot more better features that you may not even see at all in Discord, especially including uh, the member schedule and other cool stuff in here. So if you want to be part of that, there will be a link in the description leading to the Gilded server. Again, I am no longer on Discord. The day three excessive rainfall outlook is as such. There's a slight risk for flash flooding and heavy rainfall across central and eastern Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, and southern Kentucky. Okay, once again, there is a slight risk for heavy rainfall and flooding in this area on day three. Now let's take a look at another product that I rarely show in my videos, and this really 
outlines the extreme risk for heavy snow, blizzard conditions, blowing snow, that sort of thing in the Sierra, Northern California, and also across the um, desert Southwest. There is major to extreme heavy snow impacts, winter weather impacts. And again, this is the winter storm severity index or winter weather. Yeah, winter storm severity. I got it correctly there. So if you're in the Sierra, all the way through the next three days, do not travel. Blizzard conditions currently issued over there right now. In fact, if we do take a look at the National Weather Service map here for the West, it is as such, there's a blizzard warning, winter storm warning. It is just chaos. So please prepare for several hours, if not days, to get over the mountains of the Sierra, going to Lake Tahoe, Reno. If you're going north on I-5, please take that into consideration. You will not get anywhere for the next few days because of heavy snow, whiteout conditions, and strong damaging winds. Not only that, there's some strong winds across the eastern seaboard due to that upper level low and surface low tightening pressure gradients, and that's leading to some strong winds with high wind warnings and wind advisories for that area. Well, that is going to sum it up for today's video. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. It really helps out so much, you guys. We are really close to 5,000 subscribers. Woohoo! We're halfway there to 10,000. So if you haven't subscribed yet to get my latest weather updates here on a daily basis, live streams, severe weather coverage, winter storm coverage, and more, please subscribe, hit the like button, and share this with your family and friends on social media, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.